By the end of the Clone Wars, the Grand Army of the Republic's vehicle arsenal had swollen to include dozens of new war machines, from countless kinds of all-terrain walkers to repulsor lift tanks. Some of these new crafts, like the Juggernaut tank and the AT-AT, became infamous and widely recognizable, while others saw little action and were more or less forgotten, both in universe and among fans. One of the latter craft is the Infantry Support Platform, or ISP for short, better known as the Swamp Speeder. These craft appeared very briefly in Revenge of the Sith and haven't been seen much since. In this video, we'll be shedding some light on this underrated little speeder. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Most of you are surely familiar with the Bark Speeder, an Aerotech Repulsor Company product that became the GAR's primary speeder model during the Clone Wars. The ISP is actually a related design, though it might not look like it. It started life as an Aerotech concept for a heavier version of the Bark that could perform well in muddy, waterlogged environments where Bark speeders and most other speeder bikes were prone to getting their intakes clogged. Aerotech's design was ultimately made reality by another company, Ulshos Manufacturing, which began churning out infantry support platforms near the end of the Clone Wars. The reason why another company was brought in to finish the ISP is uncertain, but whatever the reason, the Republic began adding these craft to its arsenals by the start of 19 BBY, the last year of the war. Unlike the Bark Speeder, which was a proper speeder bike, the ISP was more accurately classified as a land speeder. It couldn't fly all that far above the ground, and it was much slower than its smaller cousin. It also had a different mission profile. The ISP was designed to be able to handle a wider variety of terrain, hence its nickname, the Swamp Speeder, and to be able to hold its own against much tougher craft. While the Bark Speeder was effective against infantry, other speeder bikes, and in some cases lightly armored starfighters, the ISP could additionally take on light tanks and shielded gunships with surprising effectiveness. Its general purpose, which we're sure you'll never guess from the name, was to provide fire support for clone infantry, and it was designed more or less perfectly for this job. The base of the ISP was a 5 meter wide hemispherical repulsor lift platform, which floated roughly a meter off the ground. Though this platform might look unnecessarily large, its size served a vital purpose. It spread out the craft's weight over a larger area, which was essential for maintaining balance on unstable terrain, even for repulsor lift vehicles. The size of this platform allowed it to host a wide variety of sensors, and it also allowed the ISP to carry passengers, though it doesn't seem to us like riding on one of these things was a safe idea. The ISP was propelled by a large rear-mounted turbofan engine. It could accelerate the craft at speeds up to 100 km per hour, and it was highly adjustable to allow for increased maneuverability. The turbofan could even fire backwards to rapidly decelerate the craft, preventing collisions with trees and other sudden obstacles. Though turbofans were considered antiquated by the time of the Clone Wars, they made less noise than ion engines which was super useful for vehicles designed to operate in swamps and jungles, as large predators on many planets were known to mistake the sound of ion engines for their kind's mating calls. Each ISP was piloted by two clone troopers sat on either side of the main engine. The roles of the pilots are unclear, but it's possible that one would pilot the craft while the other manned its weapons. Unlike on most speeder bikes, which left their drivers exposed, the ISP's pilots enjoyed a modicum of protection, as the ISP featured a pair of large armored mud shields on its front, which shielded the pilots from mud and blaster fire alike. The pilots were still quite exposed from pretty much every other angle, however, so they didn't have it too much better than other bike drivers. The ISP itself was still pretty heavily armored though, and it was presumably insulated against mud and other contaminants. The ISP's weapons were mounted on their own small platform at the front of the craft. These weapons were apparently modular, at least according to canon sources, though most of the time, ISPs just had twin dual-barreled blaster cannons. These guns were rapid firing, but precise, and they were primarily meant for use against enemy infantry, which they could mow down with impressive speed. 
They were also apparently powerful enough to be able to shoot down starfighters, gunships, and tanks, even shielded ones. This is even more impressive given how low the guns are mounted, and since they don't appear to have all that high of a firing arc. These guns also had two firing modes, a linked firing mode, which allowed one pilot to operate both turrets at once, and an independent firing mode, which allowed each pilot to operate one of the turrets. This was the case with the variant ISPs as well. According to Canon, there were two variants of the ISP with different weapons configurations. One swapped the blaster cannons out for a pair of powerful beam cannons, similar to the OG-9 homing spider droid's main weapon, while another variant instead featured a pair of multi-missile pods which could unleash sprays of tracking missiles upon enemy vehicles. Both of these variants were apparently rarely seen, however, and most ISPs just had the standard blaster cannon loadout. All of these variants were extremely effective against enemy infantry, and even the lightest variant could take out Corporate Alliance tank droids and HMP gunships. This really begs the question of why the ISP was so rarely seen. Evidently, they were extraordinarily effective for their size. As we mentioned earlier, the infantry support platform only debuted toward the end of the Clone Wars, sometime around the start of 19 BBY. It saw the most use in swampy, waterlogged environments where most Republic vehicles were inoperable, providing Republic infantry with vital armored support. If the value of this isn't immediately apparent to you, consider the Battle of Umbara, which happened before the ISP's debut. On Umbara, terrain complications meant that only 80 RTs were available for infantry support, and for the most part, that left Republic infantry at the mercy of more specialized Umbaran vehicles. The ISP could have been a game changer on Umbara, especially with its anti-vehicular capabilities. The most notable battlefield appearances of the ISP were on Felucia and Kashyyyk, both during the Outer Rim sieges. On Felucia, ISPs helped scan Felucia's dense jungles for incoming hostiles, while on Kashyyyk, ISPs proved effective at just about everything the Separatists threw at Kachiro Beach, pulling its weight even while being overshadowed by larger Republic and Wookiee vehicles. ISPs were also used in the Battle of Megiddo, presumably due to the unstable nature of Megiddo's giant bridges. It's also possible that ISPs participated in the Battle of Katoenamoidia, though this isn't known for sure. After the end of the Clone Wars, the ISP continued to see use in the hands of the Galactic Empire, and unlike many Republic vehicles, the Empire actually kept it around, making use of it even during the Galactic Civil War. Despite this, many ISPs still made it into the hands of the Empire's enemies, including the Alliance to Restore the Republic and numerous criminal factions, including the Huts, Black Sun, and Zan Consortium. All of these factions made good use of the ISP in combat, using them in raids or to defend their strongholds. Despite its relatively long service record, however, the ISP was always used selectively, so it never became all that prominent. It was a highly effective vehicle, but it was always competing with other highly effective vehicles for its niche on the front lines. The Republic had about a dozen other light vehicles that overlapped with the ISP's capabilities, as did the Empire, while other factions that made use of these craft had very few of them, since they were still Imperial military craft, and thus difficult to obtain privately. Nonetheless, the infantry support platform is undeniably a cool little craft, and we would have liked to see it in Star Wars The Clone Wars. But what do you think? Do you prefer the ISP or the Bark Speeder? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.